Hmm. This has just been delivered and I am considering how long I'm gonna actually make you wait until I unbox it. But I probably won't make you wait too long. I am very excited, obviously, to have a new Apple product in the Geekanoids editing room. And at the same time, I am really curious and very, very keen to see how things play out with this uh, OLED screen with the notch cut out. Up until now, as with most of you, uh, you've probably been used to having a smartphone with a rectangular screen, more likely than not with right angled corners, not rounded corners. And now we've got something very different from Apple, which I have spoken about in a lot of my broadcasts over the past few weeks. And my amazement that the notch made it out of the factory. So I'm very, very curious. Before I unbox this, before this broadcast gets uh, up and running good and proper, I just want to let you know that the iPhone 10 obviously went for sale on pre-order on uh, last, I think it was last Friday, and I did a broadcast after that happened. And then the delivery date started slipping. The good news is, uh, that certainly in the UK, and I think the same in the United States as well, probably the same in other countries, the delivery dates have started improving. So does that mean that Apple sold less of these, or does it mean that Apple actually made more stock, or made more stock available, or ramped up their production? Because a lot of people are also experiencing where they had a one, two, three week delay, that they're getting their delivery date brought forwards, which is absolutely fantastic news for everyone concerned, uh, purely because having to wait for something that you really want is not fantastic. So during this video, I will be unboxing this. I'm gonna give you my early, very early first impressions. We're gonna hopefully be able to set this up uh, and talk a little bit about the display and my opinion on the overall design. Before I do that, I will just let you know that there is Super Chat available. So if you do want your, your comment or question highlighted, then that is an option for you. But as always, because I'm that kind of guy, I will try and answer as many questions as, I, as possible, Super Chat or not. So here we go. Let's just take a look in the uh, chat room. Let's just pop that down for one second. And let's have a look who's in the live broadcast. Hello to Roy to Dr. Amelie, to Nanem, also to Sidekick1962. Hello to my good friend Paul. Thank you very much for tuning in to the live broadcast. To James Baker. Lamar Riddle is also in the live broadcast. Daniel Carter, really nice of you to tune in, Daniel. And plenty more besides. So thanks very much for tuning in. Uh, Sidekick1962 starts with a very interesting fact. He says, that I read that Apple sold 47 million, 47 million iPhones in October. That is absolutely crazy. And I tend to agree. That is an amazing amount. They're on this, uh, this roll, aren't they? It never seems to let up. And it seems that they are really, really selling absolutely stacks of iPhone 10s. Uh, Raymond Moore says, how are you doing today, mate? I'm doing very well, thank you. I wish this had turned up earlier, but better late than never. At least it's here on launch day, which I'm really pleased about. Now, just to recap, I'm sure plenty of you know this, but you can get two different colors in this. You can get the space gray or the silver version, which I think looks like an icy white version in either 64 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes. This is the first iPhone to use an OLED panel so we've got an OLED display on this uh, we've also got that true depth camera which is really interesting we've obviously got the notch to talk about but I think I've made you wait long enough I was going to wait until there was a hundred of you watching so if there is anyone who can tweet out a link to this live broadcast please do it now and when we reach a hundred then I will certainly start the unboxing so many of you tuning in really good to see you all here uh, 
Ah, oh, Tang says, I managed to get mine from an authorised reseller store. First in the queue. That is awesome. A lot of people often overlook that. They order from Apple or they queue up at the Apple store. Uh, but there are third-party resellers. In the UK, there are people like the Stormfront range of shops. There's other Apple resellers as well. And, of course, the likes of car phone warehouse and mobile phone operators, don't forget. So, anyway, we are up to 110 viewers. So, we're over the 100 mark. Let's get into the unboxing. Now, as with all Apple products now, you do not need a knife or scissors or anything to get into them. We've got this handy little pull tab. This particular model is 256 gigabytes. I will let you wait and see what color it is when I unbox. So we have got the plastic wrapper off. Should we see if we get any sort of box noises? What do they call it? I've heard many people call it the box fart. Are we ready? Let's see if we get a box fart. Now I opened my iPhone one year and there was a cupcake inside. There was no iPhone. I think Apple were playing a trick on me that year. That was an Apple used to like me. So here we go. And I've just noticed that Fewings85 says he's watching this on his iPhone 10. That is amazing. Really very, very cool. Life's Life's watching on his iPhone 6. Uh, New Rising Media says, what were your initial impressions of the iPhone 10 at Keynote? I was optimistic in a sense but decided to wait until the next gen fingerprint sensor in the seam painted it for next year. Well, when I first saw this announced, I was disgusted at the notch. The design did not do anything for me. And I've also seen a potential issue already with the design of this device, which we'll come on to in a short while. Remind me, if I forget to mention this during the live broadcast, do remind me, what is the design flaw? You, you might agree with me. You may well not agree with me, but I will tell you anyway. So anyway, somebody else watching on their iPad Pro, it's David James tuned in. I've made you wait long enough, haven't I? Let's see if we get a box fart. No box fart. So that's the top lid of the box. We'll pop that to one side. We have got paperwork on the top and it says designed by Apple in California. Now I'm gonna look down and see the phone before you guys. That's mean, isn't it? Let's make you wait a little bit longer. So we've got paperwork in here. And look, as we take this paperwork out, we've got the notch. We've got the notch in the holder for the paperwork. Oh my goodness, Apple, what are you doing to us? I've also heard rumors that the next iPad Pro is gonna have a notch as well, which is absolutely crazy. So we've got a little sheet here that says, hello. And this shows you various things about setting up your iPhone, including the new Face ID. We've also got another piece of paper here with the SIM removal tool. We're gonna to try and do this actually live. We're gonna set this up. We've also got some extra information here as well. We have got the Apple stickers, and then you've waited long enough. We've also got the iPhone 10. Look at that, a brand new iPhone. You can't beat a new device from Apple or another manufacturer. This is the new iPhone in space gray so we have the space gray version with the vertical alignment of the cameras on the back still in its plastic wrap so we just pop that to one side and we'll come back to that in a short while i just want to quickly show you what else is inside the box so these are the accessories this is how they're presented we have got the uk charger and then we have also got the earbuds not wireless these are earbuds and on this side here, we have got the adapter, three and a half millimeter to the uh, lightning cable adapter. So that is all of the accessories inside the box, apart from one more, which is just nestled in the bottom of the box, very neatly wound up. This is the USB to lightning connector also inside the box there. So we do get that as well. All white accessories, regardless of the color of phone that you actually purchased which has always been the case as long as I can remember with Apple. It's always been white accessories. So let's pop those accessories back in there, tuck those neatly away. So that's what the accessories look like. Not gonna be needing those today. And then we have got the iPhone itself. So let us peel uh, the wrapping off this. So we're gonna go back first. I will be quiet for this part because I know some of you really like this. Are you ready? Oh, 
no fingerprints on there at the moment. There will be stacks of fingerprints on there by the end of this video. And let's go for the front peel. Ah, oh, absolutely gorgeous. A minty new iPhone. Very, very reflective as you can see there. Look at that glistening in the light. Now, when it's turned off and you look at it front on, you obviously can't see the notch. And the notch is behind the glass. So because I'd looked at screen protectors, I thought the notch was sort of in front of the glass or embedded into the glass and the glass was going to go round it. But it is a normal sort of glass front screen. We have got the uh, power button on this side, uh, volume on the other side and the silencer switch. We've got the speaker and microphones across the bottom uh, and of course the lightning connector and no brake at all in the top no sort of microphone noticeable in the top and then round the back if i give you a close-up look of that we have got the dual camera setup and the apple logo just says iphone on the back a uh, very minimal information on the back no sort of serial number or anything it says designed by apple in california assembled in china and the ce mark and just some little breaks on the side now i will tell you about the uh, before we turn this on i'll tell you about the uh, potential issue not just with this one but with the silver version as well this has got a little bit of the classic look to it if you remember back to the sort of shape of the sides on the original iphone and especially with the silver version this is like a gunmetal gray or a space gray color around the sides with the silver one this is a shiny finish uh, so like a mirrored finish and I think the potential design flaw, or not, maybe design flaw is the wrong terminology, but the potential issue with the silver one is that it's going to really show the scratches. Uh, this one will probably show scratches as well, unless they've done sort of some clever uh, anodizing treatment to the sides. But um, it looks absolutely fantastic. It really does. Very, very nice looking. Wow. Wow. The notch we're going to experience when we turn it on. So let's turn this on for the first time. <laughs> Hopefully we've got some power in there. We have. We have got the Apple logo has lit up on the screen there. And whilst that's starting up, let me just grab something. I just need something to put it on. Let's just pop it on there for now. While that's starting up, let's have a look in the chat and see what questions we've got. So we have got James Baker uh, says, my iPhone 10 is six blocks away on a UPS tr truck. It's driving me crazy. Uh, Darren Gator, you reminded me of when Raj and Howard peeled off the plastic from the new phone on Big Bang Theory. I am a Big Bang Theory fan, a Big Big Bang Theory fan, in fact. Absolutely awesome program. Uh, Ryan Barkley, nice colour, but I don't like the camera layout. Uh, Jimmy Trammell, waiting to hear your impression of the OLED screen quality. Uh, 666JG Knots, I can't believe that people think that a £1,000 or near as damn it is acceptable for a phone. I do tend to agree. Very, very high price. Uh, not happy at all with the pricing myself. Uh, Russ B, hi Dave, how come you're not moaning about the white accessories with a dark phone? Well, I did mention that. It's a mismatch. It is a mismatch. And... Uh, I mentioned this in one of my Android phone unboxings that if you're getting a white phone, white accessories. If you're getting a black phone, black accessories. Makes sense. Apple just do white accessories with everything. Uh, so I do agree that with the space grey, you should get uh, dark coloured accessories. Uh, Lamar Riddle, how excited are you to see that screen, Dave? Uh, not very excited, but I'm going to give it a try. I will give it a try. Uh, joystick Jedi think it's a lovely device but waiting for the iPhone 10 Plus with larger screen well this in fact has got a screen that's meant to be bigger than the iPhone 7 Plus so we will see we will see if they do a plus version of this uh, Joystick Jedi also says top notch paperwork very much so uh, and Sidekick 1962 are you still considering the switch to Android as your main phone and you know what I saw the announcement of the HTC U11 Plus the other day, which was destined to become the Google Pixel 2 XL. And because uh, Google chose to partner with LG on the XL version, 
it didn't become the Pixel 2 XL. So now HTC have launched it as the U11 Plus. Looks fantastic. And I am still considering it. I hate to say that in an Apple-oriented video, but I am still considering it. So, anyway, without further ado, actually, I will make the wait just a tiny bit longer. In tomorrow's video, I'm going to be showing you these bits. This is one of the first items that's going to get put on my iPhone. Uh, this is a Qdos OptiGuard, and it's one of these wraparound, fully uh, full coverage glass protectors with the little sort of rounded edges on. I'm going to be showing you that possibly in a stream tomorrow. But that's one of the first things. But anyway, let's get back to looking at this screen. I'm making you wait unnecessarily. So let's have a look. So I've picked it up. It's woken up and I can see the notch. I can see the notch. It is... Wow. I'm sort of lost for words. I, I genuinely am sort of lost for words. Because when it's off, it's gorgeous we got this stealthy looking phone but when it's actually on the notch is very very apparent uh, let's just pick that up again so that it wakes up I mean it's a nice bright white the screen it does go blue off axis though. I'm not sure if you can see that, but off axis it's got a very blue tint to it when we go off axis. And I'm just being honest with you here. Please don't hate on me. I, I said to you in previous videos, if something's wrong with a device, I will tell you. And one, it is a gorgeous white display. Very, very bright white. Um, when we've got it set up and running, no doubt I'll be able to comment a bit more on like the colors. Uh, but at the moment we're just looking at the white hello screen but that notch does stick out like a sore thumb i'm sorry to say it but i'm still as disgusted with the uh decision for apple to put that notch on it as i was when i saw it in the keynote that is a shame that is a big big shame i don't swear in my videos but i almost feel like swearing <laughs> right anyway it says hello so let's um let's swipe up and it says no sim card installed you have to have a sim card installed to actually start up the iPhone so let me get my iPhone 7 plus out so we'll do this live you're not going to be able to see much because I'm going to have to do this on the desk but let me get the sim eject tool and let's pop my uh, sim card in so that we can at least get this up and running and we will see how things play out. So one, it's doing funny things on that phone as well. So one SIM eject tool, the SIM tray is on this side. So let's just very carefully pop that in. So we we'll get the SIM tray out. Here's the SIM tray. Not happy with that notch. Damn Apple, why did you do the notch? Why did you do the notch? Jeez. God, it's so reflective on the side as well. I'm having trouble seeing how to get that in the hole. Dear. Right, so we are SIM card inserted. So let's swipe up from the bottom again. Unlock my SIM. Let's just do this off camera. Not that you'll be able to see. But let's unlock the SIM. Pin entry succeeded. So we're now on the language. So we go English, and we're going to select United Kingdom, which is all the way down the bottom. Here we go, United Kingdom, setting language. So this is the first setup. This is what you'll go through when you actually set up your phone for the first time. Apologies for ignoring the chat for a while, but I'm going to get this set up as quickly as possible. So quick start, if you have another iPhone running iOS 11, um, bring it nearby to sign in automatically. So let's unlock my other iPhone. So we will click continue on here. And then it says waiting for other iPhone on the screen. Look at that. It's <laughs> That's a really good effect on the screen. It's like, whoa. 
it's really glowing so here we go hold up your camera to the new iPhone so we do this so we've sort of scanned that finish on new iPhone enter your passcode so let's pop my passcode in and now it says setting up your iPhone it's very very bright can we actually um, drag anything down yet no we can't activate the control center to turn the brightness down yet it's blindingly bright I'm going to finish up with a suntan from this screen. So it says it's going to take a few minutes to activate my phone and to set it up. So we'll pop that down there for a moment. Let's have a look in the chat and see if we've got any other comments or questions. The uh, Somebody said the advantage of the silver is it probably won't so scratches as much. Uh, possibly, possibly. Uh, Lamar Riddle, the, the one there was one of the most powerful moments in a Geekanoids video referring to first seeing the notch. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. Ryan Barkley says, do you think 3D Touch was a pathway to a no home button iPhone, Dave? Possibly. Possibly. Uh, Dan MUFC 1999, will the automatic sign-in work with the iPhone 8 Plus? It should work with any iPhone running iOS 11. So we've got to finish setting this up. So we're going to open this up, asking for my passcode again. Face ID set up. Here we go. It's going to be hard for me to show you this on camera, but I'll show it as best I can. So we're going to say continue. How to set up face ID. Position your face in the circle. So we're going to position it in the circle. And then we're going to move around and follow the green lines. And then it says first scan complete, continue. And then we're gonna follow around, we do it the other way. And it says second face ID complete, face ID is now set up. So that's how you set up face ID, just two passes, rather than continually pushing a finger up and down on the sensor. It's just a couple of passes around that. So it says setting up your Apple ID. That's the screen we're on at the moment. I still can't change the brightness on the phone. Sam Pullen, those iPhone 10 eyebrows need trimming. Well, I trimmed mine the other day, so mine are fine. So here we go. We are on the iPhone 7 Plus backup. It says it was last backed up yesterday. Um, we're going to restore from yesterday's backup. Why not? Restore. So we're now restoring my iPhone 7 Plus onto uh, this particular phone. And we're going to agree to the terms and conditions. Should then go to the restore screen. So we're almost set up and running. It says settings from your backup. Uh, yeah, we just take all the settings across. Tap continue. Set up Apple Pay. We'll set that up later. iPhone analytics. Nah, I don't want to share that. True tone, true tone display, yeah, we want the true tone display. And then it says there's an update, iOS 11.1. .1. So we're going to have to choose to install that from the get-go. So we're going to leave that installing while we do some more questions. So we're now downloading iOS 11.1 .1 to go onto the new iPhone 10. You can see there it says update requested. It will probably take absolutely ages because everyone's unboxing and setting up their new iPhone 10s today but because of the speed of the internets we've got good speed good download sp speed here in the Geek and Noise editing room we are on about 198 megabytes per second or megabits per second so really fast download speed it's already preparing the update it's downloaded it so that will start installing soon so here we go let us uh, just look at this other iPhone. Right, the other iPhone's finished, so we can unlock that and say OK. So that's now no SIM card, so we're preparing the update. Whilst we're doing that, let's have a chat about that notch and about my initial impressions so far, which are very early initial impressions. Uh, hi to Nico, thank you very much for tuning in. Let's just see if I missed any super chats. Any super chats? The super chat feature is there. No super chats yet. So let's go back down to the bottom and continue answering the questions. Sam Pullen again. How's your notch? 
you're right, you're really trolling me, Sam. The notch is fine, um, but we are currently. Just want to do face ID. It did face ID at that angle as well, even while it's on my desk. So face ID seems to work well, although it did stutter. Uh, lol, the disappointment on your face was palpable, says Lamar Riddle. Uh, Matthew Gill has ordered his iPhone 10 through Optus in Australia. Uh, Darren Gator, you may be at loss for words, but your face said WTF. Very, very true. You know me well, Darren. I don't swear in my videos, but wow. It was not good seeing that notch lit up or, or in contrast to the lit up screen. Not good at all. Uh, PKTV says, I dealt with the notch uh, by putting a black wallpaper. That's a very good idea. Ryan Barkley, is it not just a case of apt optimization, just like when we first got the bigger screens? Well, we will see because I saw a list this morning of round about 30 or 40 apps that have been updated for the iPhone 10. So hopefully they will have done something to integrate the notch into the design. Uh, so we will see what that looks like. I've got um, Tweetbot, so I'll update that during this video and we will see what that looks like. So let's scroll down. Uh, Jimmy Trammell says blue tint is a feature of OLED. Well, it might be a feature, but I would call it a failing of OLED myself because if you've got a nice bright OLED screen, then surely a blue tint off axis is not good. And when I actually looked at the Galaxy Note 8, I don't remember seeing any blue tint. So yeah, it is an issue with OLED, uh, definitely not a feature. Uh, We've also got so many questions. Uh, Gola97, not an impressed bunny, Dave. Is it going to be Android a high for you? Maybe the new Razer phone, or perhaps, uh, maybe the new Razer phone perhaps may be the option for you. I saw the Razer phone announcement. It looks like a very interesting device. Um, and I will be trying to get hold of one. In fact, I've made some inroads possibly into getting one. Right, it's installing now the update. No point in showing you it installed in. It's just going to go through the software update. Um, we've also got uh, one one saying, why Sony fail to sell cell phones like the iPhone or Samsung? I think it's all to do with their distribution channel. Not a very good distribution channel at the moment. Mainly through carriers is where you sort of tend to see people purchasing or getting hold of Sony phones. The iPhone 10 is on my desk at the moment and it has just restarted. So that is good news. Let me just stand that box up again. At least you've got some proof there that we are doing an actual iPhone 10 video. Uh, Jimmy Trammell says, notch at the bottom, but no chin at the bottom. Oh, notch at the top, but no chin at the bottom. Reasonable trade-off. No, I don't think so at all. I think they could have done it a much better way. We've also got here, uh, Frozen Flame 2025 saying at least 11.2 is in beta yeah very true hopefully one of the ios 11 updates will fix the present ios 11 issues i haven't noticed ios 11.1 fixing anything as of yet i know of somebody who will remain nameless who updated an iphone 6s to ios 11 and it practically bricked the smartphone it was so slow sluggish the battery was depleting. It was sort of going up 1% or 2% as it was being charged and then going back down 1%, up 1% or 2%, down 1%. And it was so bad. It was such a bad experience. Such a shame that they do that to older devices. It really is. I know you can't expect to run the latest operating system on older devices and them to run flawlessly, but it shouldn't render them practically unusable. Come on, Apple. It's not the way to do things. Uh, Darren Gator says, have you heard that Razer is coming out with a phone? Yes, I have, Darren, and it is hopefully going to be coming into the Geek Noise studio, courtesy of one of my really good contacts at one of the um, uh, one of the cell phone providers in the UK, or mobile phone operators in the UK. Uh, Henry Ackholm, did UK mail deliver? No, it was my favourite courier, DPD. Definitely the best courier in the UK. Uh, Rob Nethercliffe says, worth swap swapping from a Galaxy S8? I'm thinking not. Probably not. If you're enjoying your S8 
and you like Android, probably not. It's still a great smartphone. Uh, Roberto Lira, so far I'm liking the iPhone 10. That's really good to hear. And Gameplay Magic says I'd still rather stick with Samsung or the new Razer phone. Yet yeah, not everyone's cup of tea, iPhones. Uh, the update's still going. We're about 25% through the, through the update at the moment. So uh, do bear with us. Um, Life's Life says my iPhone 6 is on 11.1 .1 right now. Never had any bricking issues. Well, it didn't brick the iPhone, but it just is so, so slow. Very slow, and the battery is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, Russ B says Razer is available on 3 now. I checked this morning, and it wasn't available to pre-order. Um, but I think it's exclusive to 3. And now you know who might, might be sending me one to review on the channel. Uh, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Uh, Golden 97 Dave, go to your docks. Not good for your blood pressure, the iPhone 10. <laughs> That's so funny. That is funny. Uh, Ryan Barkley, does Face ID work with glasses and without glasses now since you look took the initial scan with the glasses? Yeah, it should be fine. Should be absolutely fine. I might do it again. I might, but it should abs work absolutely fine. Uh... Dan, MUFC1999, what's the best way to charge the iPhone 8 Plus, Dave? With either the original charger or the uprated fast charger. And I normally just charge overnight. So, and then it's good for the following day. Aravind J uh, Jayaraman says, iPhone 10, is it worth it? Don't know yet, because I've only just got it. Does the Face ID, oh, does Face ID is the future? Possibly. How is it going to be helpful in all conditions? Not sure. Is iOS 11.3 coming with it? No one is mentioning, but the website shows 11.3. No, it's 11.1 .1 it's updating to at the moment. And we're still at round about 30% on the update. I shall show you. This is what we're waiting for, people. This is a very exciting live broadcast. We're waiting why Dave updates his iPhone 10 to 11.1 .1 because Apple told me to do it. Should we just sit here and wait in silence until it's finished? Give my voice a rest. Nah, let's just pop it back on the desk. Let's go back into the chat. I'm not happy at all about that notch though. I'm sorry to go on about it. That was just so, so, so disappointing. Very disappointing. Uh, Matthew Gill says, the other thing I wanted to say is Samsung is working on a foldable tablet and also there are rumors of a foldable phone. What do you think of that? Well, a foldable phone could be really cool. I would love a phone. Not on this wrist, because this is for my watches, but on this wrist, uh, I would love a phone that was like a big flat bracelet. That would be cool. Save you carrying it around. The iPhone's just restarted, so it must have really zoomed through that. So it's done a restart, and it's now starting up. And I shall try unlocking it, not that I can see anything, without my glasses on to answer uh, Ryan's uh, question, earlier question. PKTV says some apps for the iPhone 10 do a good job at hiding the notch. YouTube do it well. That's really good to hear. Uh, Ryan Barkley says good quality cables, Dave, since you had problems with some Apple cables before. This is just the regular quality cables in here. Uh, Qdos, who sent me the um, uh, OptiGuard for the iPhone 10, they do some great cables. Uh, and Anchor do some great cables as well. So I definitely recommend getting a better cable. It's almost started up. Almost started up. Uh, Daniel Dolinsky says, Dave, how many years will Android manufacturers need to adapt the Face ID technology? I would imagine it happened pretty quick. Uh, this has just finished. So it's finished updating to iOS 11.1. .1. So I'm going to take my glasses off and see if it will unlock it with my glasses because I set up Face ID with my glasses uh, actually on. So here we go. So let's hold it up. Let's do that again. Hold it up and then we'll swipe up. It's asking for my passcode because it just didn't update. We'll try that again. Unlock the SIM. Come on. Asking for another password. So I'm gonna you're gonna have to bear with me guys. It's asking for another password for my uh, iCloud account. I need my glasses back on for this bit. 
This is an interesting stream, isn't it, people? But this is the sort of thing. Actually, it's, an, it's a useful stream because it's actually uh, demonstrating what you would go through to actually set up an iPhone when you're transferring from a previous iPhone. And this is what you have to go through. You have to manually put your password in uh, after doing the update. Otherwise, it don't work. Where's the at symbol? Oh, I tapped it twice. I'm not going to be like some people I know that read their um, passcode out as they're typing it in. I think I typed it in wrong. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't. It's updating the iCloud settings. So we can now see that notch again now that this is restarted. Let me just get rid of my password thingy. Now it's asking for another password. It's asking for my iTunes account password. So this is what we have to go through to do the updates. You can look at the top of my head for a moment. There's my password in for that two-factor authentication. Oh no, it sent a code to my iPad. That's absolutely crazy. It sent a verification code to my iPad, which is down in the studio. So we're going to take a quick break here and I will be back very, very soon once I have got the iPad Pro. We are back with the iPad Pro in hand. So it said it sent the code to my iPad Pro. Where's the code, Apple? Didn't get a verification code. It said that it sent the verification code to my iPad Pro, which it hasn't. It's uh, say I didn't get it. Uh, Let's get it to text the code. There we go. It's self-authenticated. I don't know why I didn't do that the first time. And now it's asking for it again. Oh, no, there we go. So now it's restoring from iCloud. Wow, this is a long process. It is restoring from iCloud now. Time remaining. It should be quite a small uh, restore, actually, because what I did in preparation for this video was I actually uh, backed up all of my photos from here onto Google Photos. Most of them were backed up already. And then I actually uh, deleted them all from this iPhone, so it should be a smaller backup. So anyway, why that's uh, restoring, let me just show you the difference in sizes, even though it's very bright. But you can see the screen on the iPhone X is slightly bigger than the iPhone 7 Plus obviously the actual phone itself is a lot smaller so you can see the difference in size there so a lot lot different in size and I've got really used to uh, actually using the larger size phone so going back down to a smaller physical size is quite a big difference uh, we've also got some more questions coming uh, Averind says, "Can that can can't they put the fingerprint like in the Razer Mobile? It's with the power button. That would certainly make sense. Or they could have put the fingerprint sensor on the back, but Apple didn't do that. It's asking me to swipe up again. No, it's still restoring from iCloud. This could be a long broadcast. We are still waiting for the restore. Sometimes when we're midway through the restore." Uh, it sort of allows you to actually interact with the device. Uh, it's going a little bit faster now. So let's take a few more questions. Uh, we've also got um, Golden97 saying, Android is so much easier initially setting up and transferring to a new phone. I tend to agree. Uh, with Tursa 77, it's not bigger, it's just smaller. 
There is more screen real estate on the Plus. That's good to know. Uh, how does the iPhone 10 feel in the in the hand? More sturdy or is it slippery? It is very slippery. Very, very slippery. I'm going to be putting a case on this for sure. But it is a super, super slippery phone. Um, uh, Joshua Lloyd, I am very disappointed with the iPhone 10. I was planning on, on upgrading from my 6S. But after going to the Apple store today to compare models and hate not having Touch ID and the notch. A lot of people are feeling that way, Dave, uh, Joshua. David James says, no fingerprint is needed with Face ID because Apple wanted to move forward and remove Touch ID, according to what they have said in interviews. Yeah, that's very true. And actually, they've done removal of quite a lot of things. The headphone jack, they removed uh, the... Uh, disk drives on computers as well didn't they so they do have a, a sort of a vision and they stick to their vision very much so joystick jedi is the screen on the iphone 10 the same width as the iphone 7 8 or the plus versions no it is narrower it is a narrower screen than on the iphone 7 plus but it is quite a bit taller if you took the iPhone 7 Plus from this bottom portion of the screen all the way up. That's about the size, the height of the iPhone 10 screen. Swipe up to upgrade, it's saying. It's just swipe up to upgrade. <sighs> another passcode. It did another restart. What's it doing, man? Oh my goodness, now it's doing another progress line as it's uh, attempting to do something else. So let's uh, go back to the questions. Um, are you planning to get an air mat day from Life's Life? Possibly. I would like to get one just to have a look at. Uh, OG Face says, change is the only constant thing in the world. Very much so. Very, very much so. I do agree. Uh, Dan MUFC, is the headphone USB adapter included in all the latest iPhone models? Yes, it is, as far as I know. David James, I'm wondering if the OLED display is more noticeable than than the iPhone 7 Plus screen. It certainly seems to go very bright. I wouldn't say sort of more noticeable. I haven't been able to turn the brightness down yet, but it's sort of very, very glaring. You can see there in your screen, very glaring indeed. No instant gratification with an iPhone 10. That's very true, Sam. It's because it's the same. And it's so hot. Whoa, it's hot at the top. All right, it says hello. So let's uh, put this down because we want it to, um, I want it to actually try and unlock with my face this time. So let's hold, hold it up. No, it's not doing it. Okay, let's double tap. So it unlocked and then we can swipe up. Restore complete. So it does work without my glasses on. Just unlocking my pin. Continue. Now it's saying it may take a few minutes to set up your Apple ID. You said it would take a few minutes quite a lot of times, Mr. iPhone 10. Uh, Techzilla says, I got mine from EE on my annual upgrade program. That is really good. That is a good way of doing things. Ryan Barkley has an airmail concept not already been attempted by manufacturers and reviewed by you on the channel. Well, there are other devices like that that charge more than one device it's asking me about true tone display swipe oh, it's giving me a little uh, little sort of a demonstration of how things are done still can't turn the brightness down uh, swipe up from the bottom edge any time to return home switch between apps by swiping up and holding in the middle yeah quick access top right for the control center ask Siri Press and hold the side button. Welcome to iPhone. We are in. We are finally in. So I can turn that brightness down. Oh, let's turn it all the way up first. So that is full brightness. <laughs> look at that. The camera can't even compensate for it. That is full brightness. And look at the notch. The notch is really noticeable. Ah, I don't like the notch. Look at this. Look, there's the packaging for the uh, paperwork and then we take it away and you got the notch. Oh my God, I don't like it at all. 
I know it seems like a, a real oversight from Apple. It's asking for all my passwords now. But here we go. So that's got the brightness down so you can get a better look at the screen. So a really nice clear screen, nice and pin sharp. Very, very cool looking screen. Uh, like, like really sort of vivid. So although I don't like the notch, let's just look at the screen for a moment. So I, I'm concentrating on the screen. And okay, so I can't, uh, I can't sort of um, ignore the notch. It is definitely there. Oh dear. So it is a nice screen. I like the rounded corners. Right. Let's let's look at some positives. So I, I like the rounded corners. That that's fine. I like that it goes almost up to the edges and it fills up pretty much the whole front of the phone. So I do like that. I appreciate that. Uh, the notch is annoying. The feel of it in the hand. Feels nice. Feels nice and comfortable to hold. A nice size. Uh, this was a little bit cumbersome. You know, this took a lot of getting used to. This is going down in size. So I like the size of it. I like the rounded corners on the outside of the case. It's a little bit slippery because it's restoring. It is getting super hot at the top. Uh, not a fan of the camera bump. I know there was a camera bump on the previous one. Still not a fan of that. I wish they could do away with that. Maybe make the phone a tiny bit thicker. Like the placement of the power button. The volume up and down are nicely placed. They're reachable as well. And the silencer switch obviously isn't reachable, but you do that with your other hand anyway. So it feels nice and comfortable to hold. I do like how it feels in the hand. Uh, the notch is really apparent though with the wallpaper I've got now so I will try a darker wallpaper um, does it not rotate round perhaps I've got rotation switched off but you know it works well let's just try this face ID a couple of times without my glasses on so we're going to put it down raise it so it really doesn't like that it wants to be like picked up I think so it wants to remain down on a flat surface and then picks up no, nope, still didn't do it. Perhaps I've got that switched off in my settings, but it's unlocked already. And then we can swipe up to open. And then let's lock it again. Let's put my glasses on. And let's double tap again. And then it's unlocked straight away. So it's, it's, it's a no delay in unlocking it. I think that's absolutely fine. I think that is absolutely fine. I've got no issue with that. Let's have a look in settings here, see if I turned off raise to wait, because it might have pulled the settings across from my other phone. Let's uh, do a search to save going through raise to wake. Yeah, I turned it off. So, and we set auto lock to, let's do it to a minute for this video. So now it's got raise to wake on it. Uh, True tone switched on as well. Okay, that's cool. Uh, how do we get back to the home screen? Just swipe up. So let's lock it once more. So now, when I raise it, it actually looks at me, and then I swipe up to unlock. So we do it once more, just to show you. So it's down on a desk or a table, you pick it up, raise it, it's unlocked, and then you swipe up the rest of the way to unlock. So, so it works very well. Uh, does the Samsung charger work? I've got a Samsung charger over the back here, but it's not plugged in. It should work fine. Any Qi standard wireless charger should work absolutely fine. Uh, what's the battery life, uh, battery size in the iPhone 10, please? I can't remember the exact specification. I think it's about 3,000 milliamp hours or 2,900 and something, and that should be fine for for all day use. It shouldn't be an issue. So we've got a uh, Tweetbot here, which should be the updated version couldn't complete operation it says sign in with Twitter so I've got to sign in now I'm gonna to have to do that later that's not something I want to do in this broadcast uh, but the Tweetbot app looks like that let's just turn that brightness down a bit more that's what it looks like so you know we can still obviously see the notch glaring out at us there 
and then the the multitasking is sort of swipe up and to the middle and then let go and then you get all of your different panes across that you could or all of your different apps or you can actually if you go into an app you can just swipe across at the bottom to go between apps so that's another way of multitasking and then we just swipe all the way up to go back to the home screen so that's pretty good and then Siri you hold in the side button I'm not sure I understand I didn't say anything let's try it again hey Siri what's the weather like in London okay here's the weather for London for today not even going to read it out for me. How rude. Didn't even tell me what the weather was like. I have to read it from the screen. And I'm too lazy to do that today. So that is pretty much it. That is my first impressions. I think it's a really nicely built smartphone. Apple have got good quality hardware. Uh, for me, it's how the software works. I really don't like the notch. You know, it's going to take me some time to get my head around it and see how the app design sort of integrates with it. Uh, but I do like the hardware. I think the, the multitasking portion, so where I'm swiping between apps now, that works fine. I can get used to that and swiping all the way up to go back to the home screen. The Face ID, I think pulling this up to unlock and then a single swipe up is absolutely fine. You pull down from this corner to get to your control center and then you pull down from this corner to get to your notifications. That's absolutely fine, so I like the way they've done that. Uh, no complaints about that at all. I don't like how it's getting so hot underneath my uh, index finger here. That's not nice at all. I know it's restoring, so it's doing a lot of work, but that is really, really hot. Very, very hot. Let's try the camera briefly. Let's go to the front-facing camera, and we're going to portrait mode. So let's try a portrait, we just do a standard one, and wow, it's blurred the background out nicely. There we go, you can have a look at that. That's a really nice, quick quick and dirty test of the camera. What's it done like around the edges? Quite soft around the edges, and we've got quite a clear background behind us. Even the top of my head here, which is against the white background, it's very woolly around the edges, but the actual clarity of the main subject matter, i.e. my face, looks really nice. So I do like that. And then we swipe all the way up to go back to the home screen. So really good. That that worked well. So the camera I've got no doubts about. It's going to be a good quality uh, camera experience. And the overall quality of the screen, I think I already mentioned this, but the overall clarity of the screen looks nice. Let me see if I've got any photos pulled down from the back up yet. No, it's just the one photo. Let me have a closer look at this photo, though, just for colour. I just want to see what I think of the colour rendition. It looks really nice. The blue on my jumper's correct. The burgundy on the soundproofing that I've got in the studio is correct. We've got red up here on my VW camper van. That's correct as well. Let's just take another photo. Let's take a photo of the, um, uh, of the box here. and then view the photo back. So again, I know you're not getting a good view of this, but I just want to give you my sort of early impressions of color rendition. And it looks pretty good. It's got a nice tonal quality to it. Nice detail as well. Nice and crisp around the date area. I think that's pretty good. I'm really pleased with that. That's a good camera performance. And then swipe up to go back to the home screen. So overall, I'm impressed check your email app yeah it's got five emails in it email has got the notch in it at the top that notch is ugly very ugly so the email app works fine let's see what YouTube did with um, the notch so let's play uh, let's go into library I haven't signed in it's do a little search for one of my videos and just see what the um, video playback looks like. So we're searching for my videos. We will play the video that I put up online earlier. Oh, we've got a constipation advert. Come on, that's nice. So let's rotate this round. 
So what it does when you first rotate it round is it letterboxes. It gives you a uh, sort of black bars on the left and the right. So it's not showing the notch. So that's good. You can then tap on the video. And I'm pretty sure if I tap and then expand. Now it's gone back around that way. I thought you could sort of expand it. No. Can you zoom like that? No. Maybe it needs updating. Maybe I'm still waiting for the update for this particular app. But I've seen in some videos you can expand this to fill the whole screen or you can have black bars. At the moment it's just got the black bars. I would envisage that I've got to uh, update the uh, YouTube app to give me that option. Let's have a listen to the speakers. So you could, if you wanted, uh, use a template and actually design a picture to go in the back of the case. Hmm. So in the back of your iPhone. Pictures, the, the sound. More unique. So that's the first case I want to show you. Moving on, I want to show yeah. you the slip. Sound sounds okay. This is a very Pretty impressed with that. We've got a real glitch there. I pulled the video down to the bottom and it went uh, and got stuck there and then went down. Crazy. Not good. But anyway, there you go. That is my first impressions. Before we close out the video, we're coming up to an hour. Uh, double tap to expand. Let's have a look. Let's just put that video back up. Hi everyone, this is Dave. Now, if you own an iPhone 8 Plus, hi everyone, this is Dave. Now, if no, it's not. It's not double tap to expand. Everyone, That's Dave. not working. Now, if you own an iPhone so I think I think the app needs updating before I can do that. So we'll take a few more questions. We're coming up to the hour mark on this broadcast. Um, I have got an errand to run very, very shortly. Uh, so let's take a look. We've also got questions here from Paul Whitaker. Is it a keep or return? Too early to say at the moment, but it is very, very nice apart from that notch. Uh, Scott Burgess, what iOS does it run out of the box? I would imagine it was on 11 or 11.0.1. .1. It updated to 11.1 .1 during the update. Uh, Dave, can you show us an Animoji? Let's have a look, see if I can show an Animoji. So let's compose a new text. How do we do this? Tap on there. Smileys, smileys, smileys. Tap on there. It's not doing it. I'm tapping, I'm tapping on the little tray. And nothing's happening, I would imagine it's in there somewhere. Let's have a look in the normal emoji drawer. No, it's not in there. It's not allowing me to do it. Not allowing me to do that at the moment. I think it's because it's still restoring. So, um, yeah, we'll have to try that in another video. I'll try the emojis in another video. Uh, is the screen actually busy, big enough for you? Yes, I think it is because it's a, a, a pretty large screen. It's more or less the same size, if not a little bit bigger than the iPhone 7 Plus. Uh, David James, looking forward to mine arriving soon. Do you think Face ID will move to the iPad and the Mac? Yes, I do. I think it will move to those as well. Uh, Avarind Jaraman, I'm sorry, I get your surname wrong. Aravind, can't they put the fingerprint like the Razer Mobile with its power button? Yeah, I already answered that. I think they could do that, but I think they're just moving away from the fingerprint sensor. Uh, Dan MUFC, what do you think? What do you do with your data on old iPhones before you give them away to someone? I do a complete factory reset. I delete the accounts manually. Uh, then I do a factory reset to erase all contents and settings. Any other questions? Frozen Flame, also out for delivery here in Texas. I hope it arrives with you soon. I really do. And that is pretty much it pretty much it with the questions so as I say we're coming up to an hour so I'm going to call it a day on this first impressions and unboxing of the iPhone 10 I hope you enjoyed it let's unlock this oh it recognized my face let's give you one last look this is the iPhone 10 let's turn the brightness down for you a really nice smartphone really nice hardware definitely a blue shift on the screen off axis definitely a glaring notch which is going to take me quite a while to get used to. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to embrace the notch. I really am not sure. 
a few glitches and stutters on iOS 11.1 .1 out of the box after it done the upgrade but you must take into account this is still doing a restore so maybe that will settle down after the phone has finished setting up completely but I'm not sure as to whether this will be a popular smartphone with me let me know what you think let me know on Twitter or when this video goes live after the broadcast please do let me know what you think of the iPhone 10 let me know what one you've got and if you intend to actually uh, embrace the notch Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for all your questions as well and for your patience while I got this set up. I hope you enjoyed the broadcast. If you did, please do hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. I'll be doing some more broadcasts on the iPhone 10 very shortly and also some showing you some accessories and cases as well. So do stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.